<laughs> I knew you'd be okay with that bow. It's easier when they ain't shooting back. I love replaying Chapter 1. For me, it is a way to recapture my original enthusiasm and wonder that I felt on my first playthrough. I'm your friendly neighbor at Super Antonio and please be sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you would enjoy seeing more of my Red Dead Redemption 2 content. On my first playthrough, I was certainly curious about Red Dead Redemption 2. Very intrigued with the open world, but I had no expectations. I had no experience with Red Dead 1, and I had no idea how much I would fall in love with this game and this world. And love is the correct word. I loved this game, and Arthur. I also had no idea how Red Dead Redemption 2 would completely take over and literally change my life. Let's talk about some of my favorite moments in Chapter 1. Note the sound of the storm. The natural ambient sounds in this game are a character just as much as the music. So immersive immediately. Abigail says he's dying, Dutch. Interesting how the Reverend Swanson gets the first line of the game. Abigail says he's dying. Who is dying? That unspoken question establishes a mood, a tone, and a desperation to this moment. And we just started. We'll have to stop someplace. Okay, Arthur's out looking. I sent him up ahead. <sighs> if we don't stop soon, we'll all be dying. This weather, it's May. I'm just hoping the law got as lost as we did. There. Arthur! Any luck? First shot of Arthur. Classic hero shot. Looking up from the brim of his hat. Remember this moment, as we shall be discussing it later. I found a place where we can get some shelter. Let Davy rest while he... You know... An old man in town. Abandoned. It ain't far. Come on. Come on! Yeah! Also note how Arthur discovered Coulter. He finds the setting for Chapter 1. Really like this shot of Hosea busting in, taking charge. Bring him in here! Get that fire lit, quick! Miss Jones, bring in whatever blankets we have. Mr. Pearson, see what we've got in terms of food. Davy's dead. And there's young Jack. However, he is only significant at the moment if you have played Red Dead 1. There was nothing more you could have done. What are we gonna do? We need supplies. And that is our first and last glimpse of Davy with pennies over his eyes to hold them closed and pay the ferryman. Now, if I could throw myself in the ground in their stead, I'd do it gladly. But we are going to ride out and we are going to find some food. Everybody? Dutch making a speech, the first of many, but look how nice Miss Tilly looks in the golden lantern light. We're safe now. There ain't nobody following us through a storm like this one. And by the time they get here, well, we're gonna be, we're gonna be long gone. Hey, I ain't had time to ask. What really went down back there on that boat? We missed you. That's what happened. Come on. 
We are introducing another mystery, the Blackwater job. What exactly happened there? How did it all go wrong? It's left up to us to speculate and discuss. Get indoors, son! I... We need you strong. Okay. Bridge coming up. Take it easy. I like how Dutch tells us to take it easy. I mean, I know this is a horse riding tutorial, but he's acting like a father here, as he so often claims. You up ahead! Who's there? Micah. Gentlemen. And here is our introduction to dumb Micah and his dumb lantern. Recall that reveal of Arthur in darkness. Let's see that again. Arthur! Any luck? I found a place where we can get some shelter. And then here is this first scene of Micah in light. Unsure of the significance here other than the juxtaposition of dark and light. And yet why is Arthur introduced in darkness while dumb Micah has a dumb lantern? I suppose it has something to do with the redemption aspect of Red Dead Redemption 2. Gentlemen. Found anything? I think so. Found a little homestead down that way. Okay. Anyone home? Sure. Place is blazing with light and noise. Sounded like a party. Let's go see. Follow me. <clears throat> also note how Micah is leading us to Sadie. We would never even have met Sadie without Micah. That's too bad. Davey was a real fighter. Both of them calendar boys is. Or <laughs> was. Yeah. And Mac, Sean, we don't know. Quite a business. Hello? Shut up, Billy. Shh. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, well, hello, friend. What you want? I am very sorry to disturb you. Uh, my friends and I, well, we got into some trouble up the way, lost in the storm. Ah, uh, gentlemen. We can't help you, mister. I got folks. Arthur. Dying on the trail. Arthur, we got a problem. <laughs> folks. There's a corpse right here. I, I just some There's a body of food in the wagon. First O'Driscoll shootout in the dark. First playthrough, I was really afraid of hitting Dutch. I hear you. Just keep your eyes on Dutch. I think. You know what's in the cabin, and you know what's in the barn. Easy. It's okay. Easy. You're okay. You're okay, boy. If I am planning to do a full playthrough, I will always keep this horse, so we can take him on that final ride in Chapter 6, if you know what I mean. That looks like a decent horse! You should keep him! Yes, we absolutely should keep him. Dutch being fatherly again. Get away from me! My <laughs> oh, I'm a knife out in the cellar! Wild thing, ain't ya? And here's Sadie. She's a little wild right now. <laughs> Leave her alone! I wasn't doing yeah. nothing! She's one of them O'Driscoll's! No, she ain't, Michael! Look at her! Miss! Miss! Yeah. Are you... And note how dumb Micah actually burned Sadie's cabin down. I don't think enough attention is paid to that fact. Oh, you fool! Micah! Miss! Now, it is gonna be okay. 
We mean you no harm. Miss, miss. Come on. It'll be okay. We need to get out of here and quick. Come on now. Oh. <laughs> you okay, miss? They came three days ago. And my husband, me. <laughs> okay. Miss, you are safe now. And you can't stay here. You come with us. Of course. Miss, it's okay. We're bad men. We ain't them. We are bad men, but we ain't them. One of my favorite lines of many in this game. Arthur doesn't know what to say, yet somehow he says the exact right thing. It's okay. Get on. Also note, I will assume Sadie weighs around 110 to 125, and Arthur lifts her over his shoulders to get onto the count. Try that with 50 pounds. Try that with 25. It's harder than it looks. We'll keep you safe until you figure out what you want to do. What's your name, miss? Miss. Adler. Adler. Sadie Adler. Mrs. I... He... He was my husband. And then we wrap up with that magnificent storm and equally magnificent soundtrack. Hey! Somebody's coming! Lenny on sentry duty with a repeater and a rolling block. One, it's good to see Lenny. However, does he really need the rolling block in this weather and at night? Just asking. Great to see him, however. Looks like it's Dutch. Hey, everybody, Dutch is back! How'd you get on? Uh, Micah found a homestead, but he weren't the first. Colm O'Driscoll and his scum, they beat us to it. Uh, no. Hello, Arthur. Abigail. Arthur, how you doing? Moving on, the next day, Arthur knows exactly what Abigail is going to ask him here, but he's still going to make her ask. Just fine, Abigail. And you? I need you to... I'm sorry, I'm sorry to ask, but... It's Little John. Note Little John. Partly because Arthur has known John since he was a kid, but also because John is at least half a head shorter than Arthur. He's got himself caught into a scrape again. He ain't been seen in two... two days. Your John will be fine. I mean... He may be as dumb as rocks and as dull as rusted iron, but that ain't changing because he got caught in some snowstorm. Please go take a look. Javier? Yes. Javier, will you ride out with Arthur <clears throat> to take a look for John? <clears throat> You're the two best fit men we've got. Now? She's... We're all... Yeah, we're pretty worried about him. I know. The situation were reversed. And look for me. However, free sawed off shotgun. Let's go look for John. Thank you. <sighs> Over here! Alright! Hot down, Marston! I love how Arthur tells John to calm down here, and he calls him Marston. Also note the map is available. I wanted to make a note of this location because I thought it might be interesting to return here. Quick, Arthur! That's quite a scratch you got there. Never thought I'd say this, but it's good to see you, Arthur Morgan. You don't look so good. I don't feel too good, neither. Freezing. And then we have to take out some wolves. I'll distract him while you get to the horses. Go! Draw 
I'm off. Okay, here we go, John. We'll leave them to Arthur. Right Is this a Red Dead 1 reference? Seems significant. More coming down the hill! And even more wolves. More coming down the hill! Also, we learned the origin of John Scar, which makes more sense if you are coming from Red Dead 1. Yeah, come on. Let's push hard and get back. Can we get some help? We need some help here. Come on, help him down. You're alive. You're alive. Right, here we go. There we go. Uh, Ay, uh, careful, uh, idiotas. It's his leg. Uh, oh, come on, let's get you warm. Uh, Thank you. Thank you both. This is a new low, even by your standards. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. Thank you. You got any other Lost Maidens need saving? <laughs> Always like that Lost Maidens line for two reasons. One, we get to make fun of John, and two, we establish Arthur as an old school hero, one of the good guys. Not today. Have you and Dutch talked about how we're going to get out of this? I was just discussing with Herr Strauss when the weather breaks. I suppose we'll have to keep heading east. East? Into all that? That civilization! I know. The West is where our problems are worse. <sighs> also, what is Herr Strauss doing out here, taking a more managerial role, acting as if he cares about John? Perhaps he does, but it seems out of character. Come on, Herr Strauss, let's get warm. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. <sighs> Moving on, note this transition and Arthur writing in his journal. This shows a hidden depth to Arthur's character, especially later when we can actually read this journal and appreciate his impressive illustration skills. We have been running for weeks. We found shelter and been resting here in some old abandoned mining town while we wait the thaw. Hardly the spring I had been hoping for. Always like to take out Combs' hideout first because this mission unlocks Deadeye. Maybe I should take the lead on this. They're going to be gunning for you. They ain't got me yet. No, but the way our luck's been running. Hush. Let's just get down there first. Get in cover, Arthur. So, what are we doing, Dutch? I can take this if you want. Just make the call. You want to take the lead? Go. Let's take the lead and go to work. Okay, I'll go first. Oh, 
I think that's all of them. Search the bodies. Strip everything we can from them. The second wave is always fun because that's where you unlock Deadeye. That was fun. Remember to loot everyone. We need the cash. We're waiting on you, Arthur. And it is easy to miss this chest. Arthur, get over here. Dutch can wait. Here. This looks good. What do you think, Bill? Well, looks fine. Smells good. Also, what exactly does dynamite smell like? In my mind, I envisioned something between old crayons, firecrackers, and sawdust. And now we get to meet Kieran. Hey, you see that fella? Wasn't he at the camp with Colm? Leave him to me. All right, we're heading back. Just bring him back alive. It could be useful. Oh. Hey, you got it. Help. Ah. Stay back. Not so fast, there. Ah, shit. No. You're coming with me. I'm no use to you, really. Hey, you don't mind, do you? Just let me go, come on. Really wish we had the opportunity to return that platinum watch and apologize to Kieran, but right now he is an O'Driscoll and a threat. Come on, I I I'm nobody, mister. What's your name, boy? I don't know. You don't know your name? It's Kieran. Kieran what? Duffy. Kieran Duffy. Well, I ain't gonna lie to you. This is a real bad day for you, Kieran Duffy. Where are you taking me? Somewhere you ain't gonna like. Why? What are you gonna do to me? Something you ain't gonna like. So I'd advise you to save your breath for screaming. No, please! Found a little shit, did you? Yep. <coughs> I got him. Very good. Welcome to your new home. Hope you're real happy here. <sighs> you want me to make him talk? Oh no, now all we'll get is lies. Uncle! Mr. Williamson! Tie this maggot up someplace safe. We get him hungry first. I got a saying, my friend. You shoot, fellas. Is need shooting? Save, fellas. Is need saving? 
and feed them as need feeding. We are going to find out what you need. This is the original mission statement of Dutch and Hosea's gang. It has changed, evolved with the introduction of Micah and that Blackwater disaster, but no one has noticed, not yet. Not Dutch, certainly not Arthur. Perhaps Hosea has noticed, but he likes to complain. I can't believe it! An O'Driscoll in my camp! I ain't an O'Driscoll, mister! I, I hate that fella! Oh, whatever you say, son. Well done, Arthur. I'm just sorry we missed out on coal. Oh, there's time enough for that. Now, I gotta figure out if we can hit that train. Okay. Yeah, boy. Moving on to hunting with Charles. <coughs> We're gonna starve to death up here, Mr. Morgan. We're okay. We have a few cans of food and a rabbit. For what? 10, 12 people? When I was in the Navy. I, I do not wish to hear about what you got up to in the Navy, Mr. Pearson. Arthur has very little patience for Mr. Pearson here, perhaps because Arthur is cold and hungry. We were stranded at sea for 50 days. And you unfortunately survived. Here. You're gonna need something to eat out there. Assorted salted awful. <sighs> Starving will be preferable. Come on, let's go. You can't go hunting. Look at your hand. I can't stay here listening to you two. Look, if this game in those hills, I'll find it. And you can kill it. You need to rest, Charles. You think this is rest? And how exactly did Charles burn his hand? Was there a fire on that boat? In my mind, I like to think that Charles was saving someone, perhaps a child. Here, you take this. Charles gives us a bow. This is a nice moment and the start of a friendship that will last for the rest of the game. We can watch the friendship unfold in real time in this mission. I can't use it and you'll have to. Oh, you're joking. Use a gun and we'll scare off every animal for miles around. You're never too old to learn, I imagine. Taking out the deer is so much easier with Deadeye. There they are. Quick, get that bow out, Arthur. Good shot. Now let's try for another. Aren't you glad we raided Combs hideout first? And we take out the second one with a call. Got it. Well done. I think that's all we can carry. Okay, you pick up one, I'll get the other. You sure your hand's okay? Uh, it'll be fine once I get it on my shoulder. Okay, I'll go grab the other one. Nice. We get to whistle for the horse. The first time I see the horse come when we whistle always makes me happy. Another favorite moment in chapter one.
Good boy. Nice work, Arthur. Should be enough meat here to keep us all fed for a few days. You found him. <laughs> I knew you'd be okay with that bow. It's easier when they ain't shooting back. <laughs> Arthur making a joke and incidentally not great at accepting a compliment, like many of us. Considering how things were looking a couple of days back, well maybe our luck is finally on the turn. Also, just so you know, don't shoot this bear. You cannot kill him, and Charles will get really, really mad at us. If we can find another way around. Oh, yeah, no. Thank you for showing me how to use the bow properly. I only showed you a little. It takes a lifetime of practice to master. Have a drink, boys. You earned it. Jesus, what is that? Navy rum, sir. It's the only thing. The only thing. <laughs> Keeps you sane, it does. Yes. Oh. Seems to have done a treat on you. You go rest that hand, Charles. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Heck. Arthur Morgan's first decent bit of hunting, after all these years. Yeah, well, we're on the run now. Everyone's got to do their bit to survive. Just make a good stew. Folk need it. It's been a tough few days. Been a bad few weeks, but Dutch being Dutch, he is busy making plans, and Dutch being Dutch, those plans involve robbery and dreams. Moving on to the next day, Arthur visits John. I will assume he's been checking up on John, and this is only the first time John has actually been awake and lucid. I'll mind you to show me some respect, Mr. Morgan. Mind away, Reverend. You still here then? I owe you. Yeah. And you'll pay me. But for the moment, just rest. Arthur. I think it's time for the train. Want me to come? Of course I do, but look at you. I was always ugly, Dutch. It's just a scratch. Don't lie still, son. Hello, Abigail. Dutch? Jackie. The boy wanted to see you, John. And here's little Jack again. He's seen me now. Or what's left of me. What about you? Guess I was hoping to see a corpse. <laughs> Bide your time. You'll see plenty of them. You're a rotten man, John Mars. Abigail is mad, but to be fair, John's not making it easy on her. He is an idiot, Abigail. We all know it. Now, railway man. Bill, now you ride ahead and set the charge at the water tower. Just before the tunnel. Ain't a problem. Why are we doing this? Weather's breaking. We could leave. I, I thought we was lying low. Yeah. Come on. What do you want from me, Hosea? I just don't want any more folks to die, Dutch. We're living, Hosea. We're living. Look at me. We're living. Even you. But we need money. Everything we have is in Blackwater. And here starts Dutch's obsession with getting one up on Colm and redeeming himself after Blackwater. You fancy heading back there? No. Listen, Dutch, I ain't trying to undermine you. I just... I just want to stick to the plan, which was to lie low, then head back out west. Now, suddenly we're about to rob a train. What choice have we got? Leviticus Cornwall's no joke, Dutch. Well, who is Leviticus Cornwall? You know, he's a big railway magnet, sugar dealer, oil man. Also, Leviticus Cornwall is now on Dutch's radar. And, by the end of this mission... Vice versa. Well, how good for him. Sounds like he has more than enough to share. 
Dutch. Gentlemen, it is time to make something of ourselves. Get your horses ready. We have a train to rob. Everyone ready? All right, let's head out. We just need one big job to get back on our feet. Perhaps this one. Listen up, all of you. Really like this moment, very cinematic. Gentlemen, it's time. Good luck, all of you. You all know what to do. It was fine. It was my fault. Come on! You're pathetic. You know that? Okay, let's go to work. Here we go! Here we go! Also note how Arthur tries to assure Lenny by telling him to stop yelling. Recall how he told John something similar when he and Javier found him. Arthur is treating Lenny like a little brother. It's a fun moment. Arthur, help it! Yeah, you're okay. Now, let's go slow this thing down. Where's Javier? He fell! The others will get him. Stop this train! There's another guard up ahead. You want me to take him? Uh, I'll go. You cover me. Okay. Lenny will help as much as he can, but it is up to us to do all of the heavy lifting. We can crouch here, however, we will never avoid the inevitable shovel to the face. It may be a metaphor for life. We stop the train, jump off, and then actually go to work.
locals brought so many boys up here for this. Parker, get over here. You two all right? Yes, let's get the money and go. We got some fellas holed up in this last car. Ah, shit. What are you boys planning on doing in there? Listen to me. We don't want to kill any of you. Any more of you. <laughs> Leviticus Cornwall's private car is indeed like a palace. However, I wanted to show you this painting. It's Guarma. To be continued. What did you find? These bonds. They worth anything? Oh, sure. Bearer bonds. I think we can probably sell these pretty easily. Well done. Now, would you get rid of all of this? The train? Yeah, get it out of here. What about them? What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> it's up to you. Kill them, leave them here, take them with you on the train. Just make sure they don't send no folk after us. Okay. See you back at camp. When you get back, we'll be moving on. The rest of you, let's ride. <laughs> Okay, get on the train, quick, all of you. Any bright ideas, I kill all three, so behave. Come on, move. If I hear so much as a footstep from this car, you'll end up like all your friends out here. We won't tell a soul, I swear. We can leave these jokers on the train and move on, or we can take them out with the knife and unlock weapons expert one. You will take an honor hit, however, honor isn't so important in Chapter 1. Also, there is a quarter in this rail car. What we loot here is what we take into chapter 2 and every penny counts right now, so be sure to grab it. Away and go help. We ride all night to Coulter and the sun is shining and Dutch is in a good mood for once. So we getting out of this hellhole? We're gonna try. Weather seems stable. And we just robbed the Leviticus Cornwall train. Arthur, <laughs> you're in that one. Bring Hosea. I know you two like to talk about the good old days and what's gone wrong with old Dutch. <laughs> After the intensity of that storm and all of the gunfights, we get this serene, almost sublime moment, and easily the happiest moment of Chapter 1. First playthrough, I was so eager to get out there and explore, the terrain fascinated and inspired me. Lenny! Micah, get over here! Yes, boss. You two ride up ahead, make sure there's no surprises. We've had enough of those. Me? With the boy? Just go. Come on, kid. You can buy me a whiskey. We also get to learn how to drive a wagon and learn more about Charles and Hosea. Also, interestingly, Arthur and Hosea's relationship. Hosea was much more of a father to Arthur than Dutch ever was. Dutch just took all the credit. <laughs> Gotta keep us moving, but calm. Shit. Okay, let's take a look. You all right back there? Does everything look all right? Well, what's going on? Ah, I broke the goddamn wheel. All right, let's get it fixed. You still strong enough to hold up a wagon? Shut up. I'm just saying. Don't say less. Pick the wheel up. Here we are, gentlemen. Home sweet home. You weren't wrong, Hosea. This place is perfect. I hope so. 
Gentlemen, we have survived. For now. Now it is time to prosper. And so much for Chapter 1. We made it to Chapter 2. Now the girls have your tent ready, Mr. Morgan. Come with me. I like how Miss Grimshaw shows us to our camp and gives us a mini tour. You two will be ready shortly. We put you over here. I'm sure everything will be fine, Miss Grimshaw. It should be. Most of your stuff from Blackwater got saved. Everything apart from my money. Oh, don't remind me. Well, we can always make more money. We're gonna have to. Miss Jackson, I've seen shit with more common sense than you. Do it properly. Also note how she yells at Tilly. I do feel bad for Tilly, but Miss Grimshaw does have a point. If you take on a job, do it right or don't do it at all. Words to live by. Off the mountain and rode east into some pretty enough country called the Heartlands. They've been this far east in many a year. Dutch seems a little better. His eyes are sparkling once more, and I can see he's thinking a little clearer. I think we all feel a little happier, in spite of black water and that whole mess. Arthur writes in his journal, and we get this iconic shot of his hat. And then, just as you are eager to ride out and explore the world in free roam, we get another cutscene with Hosea. Arthur? Hosea? Oh. <laughs> Quite a day. Let's hope so. There's a bunch of the boys already in Valentine. Bill, Charles, and Javier. And Swanson found something down at the train station by the lake, apparently. And Strauss came back with that creepy little smile on his face. I'm sure there's a whole list of unfortunates he's forced money upon. <laughs> Thank you. And you? I'm going to read a book. Hosea is handing out missions. Also, we somehow just acquired a camera. Oh, Arthur, my boy. My dear boy. What's going on? Nothing. Nothing at all. For the first time in weeks, nothing. We're free. We're free to plan our own futures once more. I hope so, Dutch. You kept the faith, Arthur. You always kept it. And I ain't losing it now. Dutch messing up our shot. He can see that we are filming here, and he wants more camera time. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Consider joining the channel and becoming a member for deputy badges by your name, custom emoticons in the premiere chats, and credits in every video, and daily members-only community posts featuring my random musings on life, TV and movie reviews, and exclusive photos. Arthur will take a moment to post for the Instagram, link in the description if you'd like to follow, in addition to links for the new merch store, my second gaming channel, and our Discord. Well friends, those are my thoughts on Chapter 1. Arthur is eager to get out there. He needs to go find his favorite hat, and of course, a decent horse. I'm Super Antonio. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your views. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell for daily Red Dead Redemption 2 content. We shall meet again. Further on down the trail. I wonder if I'll ever not smell a campfire again. I think it's in our skin now. How you doing, Karen? Oh, all right, I guess. Grimshaw's driving me crazy. Well, so no change there. You okay there, Tilly? I'm okay. Warm, at least. Could do with getting out of here for a bit. I'm sure. You still strong enough to hold up a wagon? Shut up! 
I'm just saying. Well, say less. Pick the wheel up. 